So following on from part three, in part four, we're gonna take a look at the whole prep process that we did to this car after we finished the repair to the rear quarter panel. So when we left off in part three, we just finished all the repairs to that rear quarter, the sill and also the inside of the rear door shut. Now, while I was in the workshop finishing off a full paint correction on a Range Rover that we had in, Mick and Will here were stripped off all the front bumper and got all that stripped off and taken into the workshop so that we could start working on the front bumper and also stripped off the doors and the rear bumper so we could get all those things stripped off and out of the way and get all this side stripped down ready for the prep process that we need to go through on this side of the car. Because if you followed the previous parts on this car you will know that obviously we need to paint all inside the door shuts for where the damage to the sill was and also where the damage was inside the rear dog leg on that rear arch. So it's pretty imperative that we get all these doors stripped off and paint these door shuts properly. There's no way we can really do a full clean paint inside there and make everything look right again if we don't remove the doors. And for the amount of time it takes and literally five bolts and one electrical clip per door and then doors are straight off, we can hang them on a stand and get a real good clean, nice outside paint on those doors. They'll also be out of my way so I'm not struggling to get inside the sills or inside the door shuts with the spray gun or anything like that. So the next day after I'd finished that paint correction and the lads had finished stripping the car down, the first thing that I wanted to do was get some of the polyester spray filler on this rear quarter panel and I came in on the Saturday morning and gave this a very very quick mask up just so I could get this panel done first thing in the morning and then get off home and leave it to dry for the weekend. So we've now got everything stripped down um, and having everything stripped down has given us a little bit of a chance to take a look at the front end. So with us selling this car I've just had a little bit of look inside the front end all the rails look good, all the slam panel looks good. There's no damage to any of the front panels or any of the rails or anything like that, which is a good sign. So we know that the car's safe at the front. It's worth just having a quick check of stuff like that while the front end's stripped off like it is. Now the back end, we've had a look at as well. That's all sound and that's all the same. Um, there's no issues anywhere there. So the bit that we're gonna be looking at first is gonna be this quarter panel. Now we've got it all repaired up in part three. I put a tiny little bit of etch primer on the bare metal edges and I've just give it a little bit of a prep up. I have noticed actually there's a slight crease running down the top of the quarter panel there, which we'll do when we fill the bottom of the boot and just do the repairs to the bottom of the tailgate. Now, for this, with it having quite a bit of filler in it, I don't want to be putting an absolute ton of filler primer on there and then blocking that out to make sure it's absolutely spot on. So we've just got a little bit of the Novel polyester spray filler mixed up in my Segola GTO. My primer gun, we've added a drop of the Novel thinners just to make it a little bit easier to spray and a little bit smoother because we just want a few light coats going on so that we've got a nice strong area to block out and just tweak those final shapes and swage lines that last little bit. Now polyester spray filler is a lot better than using high build on an area like that because unlike conventional high build the polyester spray filler once dry won't shrink and it's a lot stronger of a surface so we can block it out and get everything looking nice so that's what we're going to do next Oh 
So as you can see after a couple of coats of the polyester spray filler that's looking really nice all the shapes are nice while it's wet we can take a good look to make sure that there's no ripples or any anything that looks really far off on the panel and everything was looking really good so once I'd done that I took a 180 I then went across and blocked all this quarter panel out now what I want to do is just refine all these swage lines like the arch line and the line that joins up the bottom of the door. I want to make sure that door shuts all nice and get everything nice and clean and get all these edges smooth and make sure that this repair is really nicely blended into the existing bodywork. So after the spray filler stage, we've got a couple of pinholes and a few little bits that we need to sort out, which is no problem. Um, you know, it's quite a large repair, so I was quite expecting to have a few little pinholes and such, but we've got a nice arch, nice ways lines back. We've got that little crease there that I don't even how know how I actually missed that when I first walked around the car. And also, on the bottom of the boot or tailgate, depending on where you're from, we've got these little marks. So we just need to go around and also address these little marks on the bottom of the car. That'll be our next job. Now, I know for some of you guys, you'll be thinking, well, you know, if you've already done the repair stage on the quarter panel, why didn't we do all this at the same time? So the quarter panel really was a completely different kind of repair. It was really heavy body repair, whereas these are just really minor light cosmetic repairs. These only need like your standard high build primer um, and then the job's done. And once you've done the polyester spray filler, blocked all that out, we need to prime that over the top before we can paint it. So it made sense to get the big repair out of the way, get the polyester spray filler on there, let that dry through over the weekend, get that quarter panel all blocked out, and then do these minor repairs. Now, this one here, I don't know how quite how I missed that when I had a look around the car, or when I was repairing that quarter panel, to be honest. It's a bit of a strange one, that one, to be quite honest with you. But it was a quick fix. It just only took one skim um, of a finishing filler just across that area. And a quick block out and then we could get all that done and sorted out so the next stage of the prep process would be to give this um two really good thick heavy coats of high build now again i will still block this out um but i just want to make sure that once that polyester spray fill is dried and blocked that we now seal in all the 180 marks all the little pinhole repairs that we've done i want to cover all them up and also put some high build around the bottom of the tailgate to make sure that we can prep all that up for paint. So two really good coats um, of high build mix, four to one, just straight high build to give this a really good thick coverage that we can now block and do the paintwork prep onto. Um, after a 30 minute bake at 60 degrees, this will be dry enough to work on once it's cooled down. So <clears throat> later that day, I did actually, after it come off bake, um, get all this blocked out stay back late that night me and Mick um, till around about 7 or 7 at night to get all this masked out and prepped ready to paint the next morning and we've got the whole masking stage and the whole prep process in this video so stay tuned throughout the video to see the whole process on this car so I've used a rattle can of satin black just to, as a bit of guide coat around this quarter panel and I'm now going in with a P320 and just blocking all this out as you can see everything now is beautifully blocking out we've got no guide coat left anywhere so i know that everything's nice and flat all my repairs are good they're all blended in really nicely and everything is looking beautiful as far as the blocking stage goes now i've dusted all this over again with the rattle can 
just to give myself a little bit more of a guide coat. And now I'm going around with a 600 soft back sanding sponge. Um, I'm using it wet. These Merca soft back sanding sponges really do work extremely well wet. And I'm going straight over with a 600 over the 320. And that guide coat <coughs> is just allowing me to see all those scratch marks. Now, once all the prep work was done on all the primer areas, then it was time to go around and grey scotch bright all the car up. Um, key up all these other areas that we want to paint and make sure that everything's really well scrubbed up, everything's nice and clean, everything's got a really nice key. On the wing there we just sprayed some tar and glue remover because there's a bit of excessive tar on that front wing. So that tar and glue remover left to soak for about 10 minutes. We'll remove all that excess tar so that this whole side then is got a nice clean prepped surface. It's all really well keyed so that now we can start masking and getting this whole side outline masked ready for paint. So it's myself and Mick here that are just finishing off getting all this bagged up and sheeted up ready to get the final stages done the next morning. Now it's myself and Mick that are doing these cars together and although Mick doesn't do a lot on the bodywork side or hasn't done so far, as you can tell here by this little clip, he's always keen to get in the booth or when I'm doing the repair work, he's always keen to get, you know, over my shoulder with what we're doing and learn and try and progress his skills as far as is working on cars and also the paintwork side of things that we do at the shop so that's always a good thing now the next stage and the final stage of the prep work if you will before the paint side would be obviously to give that nice factory stone chip finish along the sill now these insignias have quite a specific pattern they come just across and then just up that lip in a very strange shape but then they also just cancel off the stone chip before the edge of the panel, which not a lot of cars do. So it's quite keen that we match this up to the other side of the car to give it that factory look. Once we put the stone chip on and it was dried the next morning, that then when we put the paint over the top, everything would look nice. Now these have got quite a heavy look to the stone chip, so we'll turn the pressure down on the stone chip gun. So we've pretty much got everything masked out now, everything's prepped, everything's been cleaned up. It just needs a final wipe and a tack cloth before we start painting. But as you can see, we now we've got all the back of the boot's been repaired, where the damage was to the back of the boot. We've got the quarter panel all repaired up, just got a little bit of wet on wet primer on some of the little rub throughs. All the sill's been done, all the sill now, as you can see, is nice and straight and clean. We've also stone chipped all the bottom end now and we've left a nice factory pattern on the end. And what we've done is we've just masked off inside there. So we'll do a little bit of a small clear blend at the top there. We'll do a little bit of a small clear blend half at the pillar and just lose the clear down there in that corner so we can make all these door shuts nice and clean and just smart it all up again. I've also put the whole pillar in to make sure that we've got a nice clean exterior on it and obviously we're going to be blending the wing i'll probably blend the front and the rear edge of the wing and just keep it away from the bonnet so that we've got a nice blend to the bumper that's going to be fitting up to it and obviously the new door from this side then we've got the second hand doors we've got all those sanded prepped masked they're hung on stands ready and we've got a little bit of primer down there next to the area where i was repairing the door and there's a tiny little dent on this corner 
So I've just done them, little bits to them, and now they're all ready sorted and ready to paint. So that's gonna be it for this part of this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. In the next stage, we're gonna be looking at the whole paint stage from start to finish, and then probably the video after that, we'll have a look at the full paint rectification on the rest of the car. So we're gonna try and take you guys on the whole journey of this car with everything that we're gonna to do to it from start to finish. So that's it for today, guys, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.